All right, guys, so we are adding another one to the coding book stack here of uh, done. Although I don't think I've I finished the, uh, I should say, I know I didn't finish the uh, cracking the coding interview. I need to go back to that. But I have finally finished reading this ginormous book here, Code Complete 2. It's about 900 pages. Um, for those of you who don't know, I, I try to read about a software book about once a quarter. Um, this one took a little longer. A uh, lot of stuff going on <laughs> in my in my uh, personal life, in my work life. Uh, sort of lagged a little bit on this, but it was a very good book. Um, some some very unique aspects to it. Uh, it's a at 900 pages, you're covering quite a bit. Uh, almost a um, very much so like a textbook. Like the most of these books are not don't have that textbook feel. This one has a textbook book feel for better or for worse I, I definitely would recommend it and if you're interested there's a link in the description below but let's go ahead and talk about it a little bit I'd like to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. I've been partnered up with Dev Mountain for a couple of years now, and I've had the chance to see multiple campuses and housing. I've been really impressed. Dev Mountain has a couple different programs from web dev to iOS development, software QA, and UX design. Some are after-hours part-time programs, and some are fully immersive programs where they actually include housing at no additional cost so you can get up and go. If you're interested in finding out more, there's a link in the description below. So for this, those of you who don't know, the type of books that I like to read about software engineering are the ones that are more general in scope. I don't like framework books. I don't like language books. I like software, craftsmanship, principles, design patterns, things that when you write a book 20 years later, all you really got to do is update the examples. Uh, but the core concepts of the book are intact and are doing very well and are still relevant. So... Code Complete 2 was, I think, written, God, I think this was last updated, let's see here, like 20 years ago, quite literally, uh, which is basically a century in dev standards, uh, 2004, 2004 was when this was copyrighted, <laughs> um, not too much has changed in it by then, it has, uh, so, so some of the things that make it very unique is just a sheer amount of content in it, right, so, um, not only are you going to be talking about clean code principles that are in there, that's, there's several chapters about that, um, but you're going to see them in multiple languages. That's not something I've seen a lot of these books do. Usually they sort of choose one language, maybe two, but in here they do C, C Sharp, JavaScript, Visual Basic, Java. Like the, There's a real emphasis on just including a bunch of different examples, which is really good because I think so often people get so hung up on only their language of choice that they start to forget. They, they memorize what a for loop is or what an if statement is, and they don't realize that it's just control flow. Does that make sense? And I, I like when, when, when writers go out of their way to just sort of keep throwing different languages in it because it forces you to look at the problem as a whole and say, I may not know what, you know, I may not know C sharp, for instance, in depth, but I, I do understand the general principles behind control flow. I think the different examples help sort of reinforce that. Another reason why I like these general high level principle type books, uh, because that's sort of how I've made my career is ramping up, right? Um, and, and going from a junior to a senior very quickly. And all these books, I think, really help with that. Um, some cool things that I really like about this, and it's not like I ever actually went and looked it up, is there statistics out the wazoo? Is that what the kids are saying today? <laughs> the, kids, the kids are saying out the wazoo. Um, I wonder where that's uh, sort of a side note. I wonder where that sort of statement came from, right? I don't know. I grew up saying out the wazoo. But I digress. The, um, there are statistics in this book to support a lot of the claims that they have from various organizations. Hey, pair programming has shown, based off you know statistic S X, Y, and Z by X, Y, and Z organization, to have a 15% you know, increase in code coverage and, to lo uh, and all, all this sort of stuff, right? It's just everything has statistics. It's all over the place. There's hundreds of them. And to that same point, the book was written in such a way 
that every chapter has additional resources. So if you go through here and you're like, you know what, man, I really like this section on um, test-driven development. I wish there was more resources on test-driven development. Congratulations, there are. Because at the end of every chapter, there's additional resources to go and check that out and see what's out there and do that. And it's it's really fascinating because I, I think that is, although not a lot of people are probably going to take advantage of that, I do think it's worth noting because so many people sometimes struggle to find the good resources, right? Part of the reason I do these book reviews, other than just put content on here and I'm doing this, is to share what the best resources are. I mean, to that very point, I have a whole repo called Ultimate Coding Resources with a list of books so that you know what the best ones are and what people like and what people say that you should do. And generally speaking, I, I think if you look at what most people recommend, most people recommend things because they're good uh, and they've done it and they've tried it. And, you know, I can definitely recommend this book. Now, uh, there's some really that I will say that the first half of the book or third of the book is really, really dry. And the book is dry. This was probably I've probably read about seven uh, at this point of these high level sort of design principles, general software craftsmanship type book this was by far the hardest one i've read and it's also the largest one so that may have played into it but it does remind me at times of a textbook uh, from college where you're just sort of like you're reading it and before you know it you're just like i just got to finish the chapter like like <laughs> That's it. I got to finish the chapter so I could say I'm done with it. And it is a little bit painful at times. I wouldn't recommend this be your first introduction to um, technical books. If I was going to recommend some things, I'd recommend this book that I'm currently reading, The Pragmatic Programmer, which was updated uh, this year or last year. Um, and I'd also recommend uh, Clean Code, which there are links to all those in the description below. But those would be some good entry-level books. Now, if you're, you've already read a couple books, you know what to expect. This is a great book to read. Now, the one thing, the one, you know, another critique I would have about it is that um, because it was written uh, almost 20 years ago or updated almost 20 years ago, it feels outdated in some of the examples. So there is a lot of emphasis outside of the web dev world. Uh, obviously, web development isn't the, the only thing when it comes to software engineering. But I think for the most part, most people would agree that the, so that's the majority of what our jobs entail in, in, that, in that field, right? And that's been a transition over the last 15 10 years or so um, in the industry, but that's just sort of been the direction. It's not the only thing, uh, but it's definitely more than, um, there's a lot of examples on here about like compilers and a lot of examples about uh, um, desktop applications, things that you don't, I should say the majority of people aren't going to work with in their career. Um, and um, that's fine, but I think this book could use a version three where it sort of updates some of those examples to make it more relevant because there is stuff on there that talk about like go to's and I can tell you I, I've, I've been working as a developer for about five years and um, I don't think anyone's worked in a go to in the last 10 years plus maybe um, for most developers who are getting started you know if you've been in the industry for 20 years you might have come across it at certain stuff but like there there is some stuff that's a little dated um and it's not the end of the world but something to consider now one section in particular i think um should be emphasized because i i don't think enough of these books really focus on it is there is a high emphasis in the last third of this book on refactoring and code tuning which is a huge deal in my opinion because it's something that is the majority of our jobs a lot of times. So often you come into a project, even if it's greenfield development, you come into a project that's greenfield development that you're still building out or a older project that you're maintaining and that refactoring and code tuning aspect. And it, it defines the difference between that because I've always thought about refactoring and code tuning as the same thing, but it defines what that difference is. 
it's it's done that very well and i think it's a great skill to pick up so in the, in this book i would i definitely think they excelled in that section so overall a very good book um statistics kind of cool to see some of that stuff right uh it's uh covers quite a bit everything from the basics of programming to clean code to testing to agile to um Actually, I, I, they barely touch on Agile. I shouldn't even mention that. Um, to um, refactoring, code tuning, uh, and then uh, some, some, outdated, some outdated references. But overall, a very good book, a bit dry. Um, but if you're interested in checking it out and you don't, you've sort of read uh, some of the other books, I definitely think this, you add this to the backlog, although it is 900 pages. So <laughs> it's a, a don't tackle it. Um, tackle it all at once if you're not ready it is a bit dry though so uh, keep that in mind so as always guys thank you so much for watching the video hope you found this helpful i'll be adding this and my other book reviews to my ultimate coding resources list so that people can see that resource and then click the link and check it out so if you haven't checked that out it's actually trending on github for a couple days which was pretty cool only being out beat out by the covid19 repos for those five days it was trending uh <laughs> Can't can't compete with the global pandemic, man. You just can't. Um, but pretty good book. Link in the description. Please subscribe. Uh, I'm on that hashtag road to 100K. I want to get that silver play button up on the wall. It'd look very nice. I'd appreciate the help. Courses are in the description. See you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my latest course, the 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews. Smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.